And this is the deal, man. If we get this, we hear this this morning, our homes will not be the same. Will not be the same. That's how powerful God is. That's how powerful the Word of God is. That you can be a father. And I'm more young men, but even in your older age, that you get this as a dad. And understand, man, maybe I can impart that one day to my son. Maybe even in my older age, man, I can speak some wisdom into a young man one day. Hear this, please. Ladies, get on your man and say, man, this is for you. you got to hear this. Turn to your man and say, honey, pay attention, man. This is on you. And I'm going to be, we had mom's day. And I speak to the moms a little different than I speak to the dads, okay? Dads can handle it, man. You're tough, rough dudes, and we're going to hit you in the head today. Come on, that's the deal. That's what we're going to do. And I hope you can take a hit, man, because we're going to hit this hard. Because I'm going to challenge you as a man today. I'm going to challenge you as a father today. That are you upholding what you need to uphold being the head of your house? Are you the one that says, man, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord? Man, do you have the guts? Do you have the, what it takes to say, I don't care what right and left says. I don't care what this person says. I don't care what that person says. I care about me and my house. And in that, we're going to serve the Lord. And you recognize in Exodus 15, 3, it says the Lord is a warrior. Man, hear this. God is not some wimpy, dimp little God who just sits around in the lollipop field. God is a warrior, man. When you understand that, and we're made in His image as men. The Lord is a warrior. Do you imagine the battle and the fights that God has fought for us, even for our sin over death and what it took when we cry out, the Lamb overcame, and that was a battle, and that was a war. The Lord is a warrior, and it says the Lord is His name. That word Lord, it means authority. He is in power. He is supreme. He is sir. He is master. He is all-knowing. He is everywhere all at once. All of that combined into the Lord, and the Lord is His name. And do you recognize, do you understand that we are made in His image and God calls us to rise up as men to be warriors in our home. Man, what would happen? I want you to think about this as we pray. What would happen if we did an interview of your kids? What were the top three things they might just say about you? And man, I'm looking at myself as a dad. I've got my 16-year-old son. I've got my 14-year-old daughter. Man, you treat them differently. I got my little eight-year-old, and you treat Ethan, oh, so much differently. <laughs> but I treat Carter and Olivia differently, man. With Carter, I can punch him around a little bit. Say, dude, act up, get up. With Olivia, man, you just kind of, she melts your heart. And you speak differently when you have a boy and a girl. So here I am preparing this for some time now, and I'm asking myself, what if? What would be the top three things? As a dad, man, as a godly dad, that my kids could say about me. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for this time, God. Your word changes lives. God, we have seen so many lives, so many marriages, so many men changed in this place. God, you are doing such an incredible work. And we thank you for it, God. We thank you for what you're doing in this place by your word. God, that your Holy Spirit is moving among men and moving among women and moving amongst children, God. Thank you for homes not the same. Thank you for women and wives not the same. Thank you for, for men and dads and fathers and husbands not the same. We thank you for college students not the same, God, because of your word and what you're doing by your spirit changing lives. Father, thank you for that. And we come before you this morning, God, asking you, please speak into our hearts today. God, we come before you asking you, God, to give us the eye to see exactly what you need us to see this morning. God, give us an ear to hear directly from you. Pinpoint this message by your Holy Spirit directly into the heart of man today, God, please. And folks, I ask that you would ask God. God, speak to me today. God, speak to me today. God, I came just to, for food. God, I came just for this or I just came because I got invited. But I'm asking you, you have the ability to hear from the creator of the universe this morning. Hear this, please. You may not have come with an intention to be able to hear from God. But I'm asking you to ask God to speak to you this morning. God, speak to me. God, speak to me today. And I'll respond to what you say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, Ephesians 6, 4, please. We're going to go over three things, gentlemen. We're going to go over three things this morning. And if you get this, if you understand this, and you, and you, and you would be able to say, okay, man, if, if, that's, if that's how my, my children 
even in their young age, even in their older age, when they're out of the house, if they would look back and say, man, that was my dad right there. And I'd say, that's a home run for me. My kids can look back and say, that's my dad. Or they can look right now while they're under my roof. And they can say, man, that's my dad. We're going to go over these things. Ephesians 6, 4 says this. Fathers, do not provoke your children. Fathers, are speaking to us, men. Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up. Right there, that's huge. Highlight that, underline that, circle that. Bring them up. Fathers, it is our responsibility to bring them up. In what? In the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. In the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. When you recognize, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Man, we are not to lash out in anger. We're not to come to a point to be harsh in our tone. There is a difference between anger and firm. It's okay to be firm. There are times you need to be firm. There are times your kids need to know, oh, he is, who he's serious. And there's a difference in tone at times when you're firm. But if you are harsh and do it in a, in a place of anger, what's God say? Don't do that. Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline. Man, it's our responsibility to walk them through in a training session of how to be young, young men and young women. To truly understand that we have a very limited opportunity. Man, you understand, if you're, if you're a parent who your kids have come and gone, you understand how quick that opportunity comes and goes. You, you blink and they're gone. My 16-year-old driving now, soon to be out of the house. Man, that is quick, folks. That is quick. You who are parents of, of an age that you know, my, my kids are out of the house. Man, that's like yesterday. It goes so fast. Man, young men in this place, please hear this. Your time is limited with your kids. Your time is truly limited to be able to speak and encourage and build and discipline and instruct them in the Lord. Your time is limited. And when you begin to understand that, time becomes very valuable. And when you begin to understand that, time becomes very, very precious because you know it's limited. And you know time is short. When it, time is short in general, the Bible says. But when you put a limitation even on that which is in your house, it becomes shorter. When your eyes are open to that, your time becomes very, very valuable. So bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. The Lord here is the same word, supreme, authority, power, all-knowing, everywhere God, one who is sir, one who is master, one who has always been, the one who we confess as Lord, the one that we bow down and worship, the one that we cry out our praise to. You see, that, that is how we're to bring up our children, bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. What, what is the instruction of the Lord? The Word of God. Bring them up in a house that understands that this is truth. Bring them up in a home that recognizes Dad leads us in devotions. Dad believes this is the truth. Dad understands what this is in the Word of God. That we are led and guided by the very Word that God put on page for us to know Him on a deeper level. My dad honors the Word of God. See, number one to this, man, is this. If your children could say one thing, the first thing about you as a dad. I would say I would be amazed and honored if my kids would look at me and say, my father, number one, my father, he fears the Lord. My father understands a holy God. My dad understands what it is to come before a holy, perfect God and come before Him in reverence and come before Him in trembling and come before Him to recognize who God is and to walk in such a place leading our home in a very biblical, reverent fear of God. And you know what's wrapped up in that? When you understand what it is to fear God and have a reverence for God, there's an automatic hate for sin. My dad would not allow sin in our lives. My dad would recognize sin in his own life and deal with it and get rid of it. My dad had such a fear of God and such a reverence for God that he hated sin. And he protected us and he defended us in such a way that he wouldn't allow sin in my home. Wouldn't that be amazing? So I want to read something to you, Joshua 24. And I want you to just hear this, please. This is Joshua 24, 14 and 15. I say this verse all the time, man. I want it to be me. And this is what it says. Now therefore... Fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth. Fear the Lord and serve Him 
in sincerity. That means with something that is genuine, something that is authentic, not just a fake, not just, not just here and there and gone tomorrow, but something that is sincere, something that is genuine, something that is lasting. This is what it says. Serve Him in, in sincerity and in truth. Truth here, it means faithfulness or loyalty. Men, this is the deal. And He's speaking to men. Hear this. Therefore, now, fear the Lord. Serve Him in sincerity and truth. And put away... Look what Joshua says, put away the gods which your father served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. You know what that tells me? You have no excuse. Well, you don't know the background I came from. You don't know the family that I grew up in. You don't know how bad my dad was. You don't know the idols that were in my house. And you don't know. You know what Joshua says? Put it aside. Your future is your fault. How you choose to lead your family, man, that is all on your shoulders. Do you understand that men, men, us men, you and I, as dads and fathers, as young men, one day going to be a man. Do you know the responsibility that's on our shoulders? Do you know the very weight that is on our shoulders to lead our families in these days? Lead them godly and lead them into such a way that we have a reverence in our home to fear God and hate sin? In this day, you know the weight? of what it is to truly lead your family and a God sense in your home. It's heavy. When you begin to recognize the, the responsibility that God has given you, the Bible says that you are the head of the wife and that you can imply that to the house. You know what head means? It doesn't mean I'm the boss, Alice, do as I say. Eh, that is so wrong. That literally means the accountable spiritual leader of the home. And you know what it means to be accountable? That means one day you'll give an account. That means you and I, one day, as heads of our home, will give an account before almighty, living, true, powerful God of how we led our families spiritually. Talk about weight. You talk about self-check day after day. Man, being the head of my home, I will stand an account before almighty, powerful God and how I led my family spiritually. That's what that means. There's a little more weight to that then do as I say. Now please hear this. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and truth, and put away, put away the gods which you, where your father served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. If it is disagreed, listen, I love this man, this is where Joshua shows up as a warrior man. Joshua is the one who went into the land. Joshua is a, is a part of the two out of the twelve. The, the ten said, we can't go, there's no way. Joshua said, pick up your sword man, let's go. God's given us the land. He's coming from a warrior mindset man. He knows how to conquer, he knows how to walk in obedience. And he says this, I love this. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, fine. That's your business. Choose for yourself today whom you will serve. Whether the gods of, of which your father served, which are beyond the river. And he says this, the gods of Ramorites whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, he says we will serve the Lord. You get so caught up in what everyone else might think. You get so caught up about what people might think about you and your decision to serve the Lord. Are you so caught up? about what your neighbor's doing or this one's doing. Listen, Joshua put a stake in the ground and said, listen, this is where you need to be. But if you choose not to go that direction, that's on you. That's your future. But know this, as for me and my house, we are going to walk in the fear of the Lord. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And it will be with sincerity. And it will be authentic. And it will be genuine. And no one can look at me and say, you're a hypocrite. Because we follow Joshua 24, 14 and 15, when it says, with sincerity, being genuine, we shall serve the Lord. And you see Psalm 97, 10, it says, those who love the Lord will hate evil, or hate evil those who love the Lord. That's a powerful verse. Because when you're saying that I'm walking in a fear of God, when you're declaring to your children, listen, your house knows you best. You just, man, you just can't get away with a whole lot of junk in your house. You just can't do it. They're everywhere. Kids are everywhere, man. They just run around there and they surprise attack you. Please, no. Man, they are listening at the door, man. They're everywhere. They know what you're doing. When you understand, if I'm going to be before my children and I'm going to walk in this fear of God and this reverence of God and my hate for sin, and man... My kids will begin to recognize if I am one who truly understands what it is to hate evil and walk in such a way to fear the Lord. Psalms 33.8 says this. All the inhabitants of the land 
Fear the Lord. And what? Let all the earth fear the Lord and all the inhabitants of the land do what? Stand in awe of Him. Dads, your kids look at you and your wife look at you and say, man, he is one who understands what it is to walk in a reverence of God. He is one who understands at times what it is just to stand in awe of the creator of the universe. To understand what it is. To walk in fear of God. This is a great verse. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says this. I want you to see this. The conclusion. When all has been heard. Now this is written from the second wisest man who ever walked the earth. Jesus first and then Solomon. And Solomon says this. The conclusion. When all has been heard. That is the end of the road, man. At the end of the day. This is the deal. Fear God. Keep His commandments. Because this applies to every person. Could you imagine? Dads, fathers, fathers-to-be one day, young men in this place, to walk in such a way to get it now, to understand it now, that at the end of the road, the one who has gone through so much, Solomon who was on target, got off target, back on target, and the end of this, the conclusion of this, he says, listen, the end of the deal is this, that you would fear God, have a reverence for God, and obey His commandments. And if you can do that, score. So number one is, if your children look at you and say, man, my dad understands what it is in my home to walk in a great reverence, to stand in awe of the creator of the universe, and to hate sin, and to recognize sin, and get rid of sin, and understand that I'm not going to let sin in my house. The second thing is this. As dads, as ones who your kids, your sons, and your daughters are looking up to, Second thing is this, if I would love it if my kids, it would be a total score if my kids grew in a house and they walked out of my home and they knew this. Number one, dad feared God. Number two, dad adored my mom. My father knew what it was to love my mom. My dad knew what it was to show affection towards my mom. My dad knew what it was to defend my mom. My dad knew what it was to protect my mom. My dad knew what it was. Man, he adored. My mom. Again, your kids see everything, folks. They don't miss anything. Gentlemen, how is it that we are treating our wives? Gentlemen, how is it? Are we doing as God's intent? Do we do this? God has instructed you and I to walk in a way to adore the very woman that God has given you. Proverbs 19.14 said that the prudent wife is from the Lord. When you understand that you have a woman who has good discernment and you recognize the very beginning of creation in Genesis 2, God set it up to so Adam, not good for you to be alone. Man, I am making you a helper for you, one who is your helpmate. Recognize her value. Recognize her worth. Recognize that she is prudent. Recognize that she sees things quicker than you see things at times. Recognize that she makes great decisions. Understand that she has good judgment. And the Bible says a prudent wife is what? From the Lord. The Bible also says in Proverbs 18 that a good wife, a good wife, now folks, a good wife, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife, do you look at your wife as a good thing? Do, you, do, you, do your kids understand, dads, that you look at your wife and recognize, I have got the best, man. I understand who she is, and I understand that she's a gift from God, and I understand that, man, that she is good. And Renee reminds me all the time, Sean, you have favor from the Lord because I'm a good wife. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, listen. <laughs> you find a good wife. Listen. Oh, is a good wife and obtains favor from the Lord. I'm telling you, it is elbow to the side. Man, you are lucky you've got me, Sean. <laughs> the God, God's hand is on you because of me, Sean. I bring you favor. I mean, it is awesome. It's truth, and it's just constant reminder. I don't know, but it's good. It's a, it's a good deal, man. Come on. But man, do you realize what you got? Proverbs 31 says, an excellent wife is from the... An excellent wife. An excellent wife. Point is, women, are you an excellent wife? Man, we're gonna, I can't wait to preach on marriage. I can't wait to get in this family series because I could say so much right there. <laughs> I could say so much, but we got to get the water. So that wait for the family series. The family series is next, man. I can't wait to kick that off. 
I just can't wait. You understand what the Bible says? He who finds an excellent wife. He who finds an excellent wife. For her worth, her value is far above jewels. Do your kids understand and recognize? My dad knows the value of my mom. My dad knows her worth. My dad knows who she is and what God has given him. My dad adores my mom. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 4. Again, the excellent wife is the crown of her husband. And that word crown, we're going to get into this in detail when we get in the family series. But this word crown, you know what that means? That means something to celebrate. Victory. It's a sign of victory. Man, my dad knows that my wife, that his, his wife, my mom, man, he celebrates her. She is his victory. And man, he tells us and he lets us know, my dad understands who my mom is and celebrates her that she is victorious to him. And I love this. Back to Proverbs 31 verse 28. It says, the husband, the children praise her, but the husband also praises her and says, you excel them all. That the husband praises his wife. And this is the same word praise as it is to Christ Jesus throughout all the Psalms. That my dad, he thanks mom and he adores mom and he praises mom and he lifts mom high publicly and privately. Man, he doesn't just do it when she's around. Man, I've been out with dad at Stuff Mart and I've been out with dad at the different places. Man, when things come up, mom's not even there and my dad bragging about my mom everywhere he goes. What do your kids see? Could you imagine if they left the house? My dad feared the Lord. And my dad sure knew what it was to love mom. My dad, he, man, he showed me how to adore a woman. He showed me how to respect a woman. Men, please teach your young men how to respect a woman. Teach your young men how to speak right to a woman and that man they pick that up on how you speak to your wife and how you treat the very one that God has given you that you would teach and train you young men how to honor a woman and how to value a woman and how to speak right to a woman because they are watching and they're paying attention on how you speak to the very one who, who has given birth to them and loved them and cared for them in such a way because your kids are so attached to their mom and there is something natural in them please hear this that will defend mom Please let them see you be the one to bring defense and be the one to stand in the way of anyone who would try to attack your home or your wife so that you young men would understand what it is to value, to value a woman and how to care for a woman one day. It's huge. And the third thing is this. Wouldn't it be amazing if your kids would leave your house and they could say this about you, Dad. In the good times, in the bad times, in my mistakes as a teenager, in my mistakes as a young person, even in my mistakes as an adult. You know what I know about Dad? He was always for me. That's huge. Could you imagine what it is when a young person who God has given you as a gift looks at you and can honestly say, in my good and my bad, Dad, you were always for me. You've always stood for me. God, you've always defended me. When I was wrong, you said I was wrong. But you still defended me. God, when I was right, you said you were proud of me. Listen, please, don't misunderstand. I'm not, when your young guy stands and watches three perfect pitches go over the plate and he doesn't even swing, Please don't be the parents. I'm proud of you, Junior. <laughs> don't do that. Swing the bat, dude. Come on. They're perfect pitches. You missed that. Don't be that parent that yells at the game. That, you know, they, the pitcher throws it over the backstop. Good pitch, Junior. No, it wasn't. I'm not even close. It was a horrible pitch. Don't do that. <laughs> But in the horrible pitch, and in the strike three, the kids can still know that you are for them without lying to them. Do you understand this? That when you 
release your kids. Doesn't start when they're 16 and 17. It would be way too late for me. It starts now, whatever age you've got. If you've got young people, we have a very young church, which is an amazing, amazing thing. And if you have young children that God has blessed you with in your home, would they look at you and say, my dad knows what it is to fear the Lord. My dad walks in such a reverence before God that he hates sin. My dad adores my mom. He knows how to defend. He knows how to protect. My dad is a warrior. My dad understands what it is to fight the good fight. And I know this, that my dad is always for me. Come on, let's bow our heads, please. I'm telling you, me going over this, I, there are so many more different, so many more things that we could say, man, it'd be great if my son says this about me. It'd be great if my daughter says this about me. Yeah, that's all. There's so many. But I break it down to these three. It would be amazing if we raise up our kids to walk in a way to fear and reverence the Lord, to stand in awe of Him. To understand what it is to be the godly man head of your home. What it is to honor and adore and praise and value your wife so your kids understand. So your daughters know what it is when a man comes knocking. That if he doesn't meet the criteria of dad and how he has treated mom, then he's got no chance. That is huge. When you understand that, when you recognize, I don't want my daughter going with some clown. I want my daughter to look in such a way to find a man in how I have treated Renee. And there's no way I come close to perfect. There's, no, there's so many mistakes in my house. But man, I own up to them. And they know how much Renee means to me. They know how much I value you, Renee. They see the times I pat her on the behind all the time. <laughs> they see it. Renee says, we're going to make out right in the kitchen. The kids are watching. I'm like, I don't mind if you don't mind, right? And <laughs> That's just my house. We're praying. we're praying, I know. Renee says, we're praying. <laughs> That's all you hear about us making out. You don't get no more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but gang, do your kids know? Fathers, do your kids know that you are for them? And I love it. Even to this day, my dad is in his 70s. Past mid-70. Every week. Man, he talks to me and says, Sean, I'm proud of you. Man, what God is doing at Believer's Chapel and the lives of God is being changed and how you just stand there and speak truth. And he knows the hits that we take at times as the leaders of the church. He knows the things that take place. You know how it is, I am in my mid-40s, he is in his mid-70s. And to hear my dad say, Sean, I'm proud of you. My dad is for me. Dad, what can your kids say about you? Father, we do thank you for this morning. God, we know that you are Abba, Father, you are the greatest Father of all. You are the perfect Father. And one thing I know, that you are for me. And one thing we know, God, that you are always good and you are always for us. So much so that you would send your own Son to die on the cross for us. That we know what it is to be dead to our sin. We recognize the penalty of our sin is eternal separation from you forever. Death. But because you love us, and because this I know, God is for me. God, I know that you love me. And I know that you sent Jesus to deal with my sin. God, I know no matter what season of life I'm in, no matter where I stand in this journey of life, this I know that God, you're for me. Please hear this. Anyone in this place today, do you know that God is for you? Do you know 
that the wages of sin is death. Do you know the whole reason that Christ had to come to the earth? The whole reason Christ had to go to the cross, calling us to the cross, was because of sin. Because of our wrongdoing. Because we're separate from God based on sin. And God said, I am so much for you. And I have loved you with an everlasting love that I will send my son Jesus to die for the world and the sins of the world. And in that you may know freedom. And in that you may claim Christ as Lord and Savior. In that you can come to a place to repent and turn from your sin and recognize damnation for an eternity or freedom in heaven forever because of what Jesus has done. But the first thing, gang, please get this, that you've got to recognize sin has separated you from God. And you've got to recognize that God loves you with such an everlasting, eternal love that it cost Him His Son. Fathers, hear that. It cost Him His Son for you. That if you would confess that Jesus is Lord, and that you truly would repent from sin, the Bible says you'll be saved. The Bible says you will be rescued. The Bible says that you will be safe. The Bible says you will be forever with Him. But you've got to come to a realization this morning. I, I need Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. It is my desire to have Christ in my life. It is a desire, man. God has drawn me near to Him this morning. That I truly understand what it is to confess my sin, turn from my sin, and know and confess that Jesus is Lord. Man, if you're dead in this place, you come to a point to say, it is, it is my desire to have one, two, and three. It is my desire that my kids would look at me and see with such sincerity with a genuineness that I have this reverence for God. And I want my kids to see how much I love and adore the very woman that He's given me. And I want my kids to know that I am always for them. If you need to make changes this morning, man, only you can do that. But as for me and my house, man, my choice. My choice. Gentlemen, it's your choice. You're going to put down the gods of your fathers and choose to go after Christ, go after God, and walk in such a way that you can boldly, confidently, without shame, say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.